It has been clearly established through many sources, including the federal government itself, that the El Toro Marine Corps Air Station in Irvine is a deadly cancer-causing hazardous waste arena. The Marine Corps and Navy are on a campaign to fight their responsibility toward Marines. Camp Lejeune in North Carolina has made countless Marines sick, and that place is extremely active as a base still. El Toro, closed since 1999, is seething with chemicals once used to clean aircraft, then dumped into the grates. It is in the groundwater. It is in the air. It permeates the very soul of the place. The Marines did it gradually over several decades, and for the most part, they were in the dark as to the wreckage factor. But the money-grubbing developers and their interloper friends in Irvine's facade-based government have no such excuse. Instead, they only care about one thing, and that's profit. Money's driving this train, no question about it. But you don't want a ticket on the train if you're going to avoid it. It breaks my heart to see the medical dispensary in this condition. It's probably one of the last buildings standing in this whole section of the base here at El Toro. It's radically different from the last time I saw it, which was only maybe two years ago. The whole base was still pretty much intact, and you could drive around and see the different things. They've got it blocked off, gated off. They have a college campus established here now, very close to the area where I was uh, located as a Marine, and that is the prime area for the TCE contamination. El Toro was designated a Superfund site by the EPA years ago, but the very worst assessment in history wouldn't slow Irvine and the Lennar Corporation, the home builder known for building subdivisions on government toxic waste sites, purchased for pennies on the dollar like El Toro, from pushing plans forward to build homes here. They simply won't accept the fact that El Toro is totally uninhabitable. According to all factual data on the site, there's no truth to the area being safe in terms of groundwater. This week, the developers were able to get the Orange County Register to publish their false message about safe water at the base again. Several other former El Toro Marines and I have been documenting this contamination and writing about it for almost three years on SalemNews.com. Two of those former Marines, Robert O'Dowd and John Aldrich, know the chemical TCE, trichloroethylene, was never designed to be in contact with human beings. It is deadly. My exposure to TCE was that when the weather was right and they were ready to finish off the planes, they would take the F9Fs and the F4s out, and then they would, uh, after they had sandblasted them, they would high pressure spray them with TCE, and there'd be this big explosion of this kind of a green, sickly mist out there. And if you didn't back away from it or you got caught in it, then your uniform, uh, whatever it was of the day, would be uh, uh, pockmarked, and uh, you had to buy your, your replacement out of your own pocket. Generation after generation, this took place for Irvine, Lennar, and the Great Parks Corporation to suggest that this is a safe place to live is a lie of criminal proportion. I wouldn't want to live here. I certainly would not want to buy any property here. I mean, it's an expensive area, but, you know, why would you want to buy a property on a former EPA you know, Superfund site and, let, and have your kids possibly exposed to this stuff? Can you imagine digging your swimming pool and dig up a, a buried you know, container of... 55 gallon drum or one that rotted in the ground as we know there are some that are buried here. Chronic exposure to in the government parlance is three months so there has to, has to be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who are exposed to at least TCE and then the other thing to remember about TCE is that uh, uh, it attacks the autoimmune system and when you get to the autoimmune system, you get into a whole branch. It trees out into, I think, about 95 different medical issues. And so you've got this really great spread of, uh, of particular problems. And then, of course, it's known to be uh, a mutant. And so now you get into second and third and how many other generations. And of course, they already know this with Agent Orange, is that it's going into second and third generations. TCE does the same thing. As Orange County media continues its old pattern of downplaying and even covering up the danger of El Toro, SalemNews.com continues to accumulate email and contact information from hundreds of former El Toro Marines. Attorneys are stepping forward, research is taking place, and Irvine is completely wrong for assuming that this wicked problem is going to go away anytime soon. Being out here is a little sad because uh, there's a lot of people checking in on these issues, but there are so many more people who are not checking in, and you've got to wonder you know, are we getting the word out to them or is it already too late? And 
that's the sad part is that for many people it's probably too late. So they don't know. They walk along one day and boom, they get something real serious and they can't connect the, the dots. So, uh, and the government's not telling them. There's no, there's no intent on the part, no effort on the part of the government to inform veterans that if you're at so-and-so base where you have these contaminants you, and you may have these, the health effects from that, you need to talk to your family doctor. Nothing. This ruin of a Marine Corps base is a silent reminder of the tactics of the city of Irvine, Lennar, the Great Parks Corporation, and the tragic treatment of the American veteran overall. And that is only the beginning of the story of El Toro. There is not an ounce of truth to any reports of water around the base being non-toxic. At the former El Toro Marine Corps Air Station in Irvine, California, I'm Tim King reporting for SalemNews.com. In early 1991, something happened at the El Toro Marine Corps Air Base that was so bad, so shameful, that it will not go away. It's the highly controversial death of Marine Colonel James Sabo, a fighter pilot, a hero of the Vietnam War, a man considered by those who knew him to be general material. Colonel James Sabo was murdered because he was going to bring the roof down on a number of senior Marines at El Toro for their involvement in the continual running of drugs to aid terrorist groups in Nicaragua known as the Contras. Today, the old El Toro Marine Corps Air Station is a closed down, deserted ghost town. It's a toxic EPA Superfund site that poisoned and contaminated the Marines who worked here. The flight line was the center of West Coast Marine Air Operations and the place where Colonel Sabo and other pilots took off and landed in their fighter jets. You remember Marine Colonel Oliver North. He was national news for a long time for his role in the program that led to vast amounts of toxic white drugs landing in the streets of America, particularly in black neighborhoods already stricken with poverty. He was convicted of three felonies. All were later dismissed on a technicality. By the time Colonel Jim Sabo got wind of this activity in late 1990 and threatened to blow the whistle, the Drugs for Weapons program to aid the Contras was specifically outlawed by the U.S. government. Jim Sabo was a career Marine, a Harrier pilot, third in command of El Toro, and he wasn't going to allow the illegal drug running to keep taking place at his base. His mistake was talking about it, telling people that he wasn't going to put up with it. Sabo was facing trumped up charges that most believe were a retaliation to his threat to expose the drug trade. But it was enough to land Jim Sabo in real trouble. He had a lawyer and an investigation was underway. But his wife reported that the day before his death, he was told, Jim, you'll never get to a court-martial. And indeed, he did not. On the morning of January 22, 1991, Colonel Sabo's wife came home and found him dead in the backyard. He had apparently been sitting in a lawn chair or made to look like he was. His body appeared to be holding a double-barreled shotgun. For starters, Colonel Sabo had a massive contusion on the back of his neck and head, a contusion the size of an orange, and severe bruising that would be consistent with the strike from a blunt object from behind, like a shotgun. He had other injuries, and he had aspirated a significant amount of blood, meaning that his heart was beating after he was severely injured, not what happens after a shotgun blast to the mouth. The shotgun was the tool used to make this death appear as a suicide. For a medical doctor like Colonel Sabo's brother, Dr. David Sabo, there is no question that the shotgun blast had nothing to do with his brother's death. Jim Sabo lost a total of one ounce of blood from the shotgun blast to the mouth. Had he committed suicide on the spot, there would have been massive amounts of blood, by any account. Dr. Sabo, former Marines Robert O'Dowd, John Aldridge, and myself are hoping that a movie production company will find this to be an interesting prospect a movie production company with courage. I can be reached via email at the bottom of this article and I will connect any interested parties with Dr. David Sabo. This may be one of the nation's most shocking stories because of the substantial implications against the U.S. government itself 
and people who are still in office and still employed in Washington, D.C. If you have information about Colonel Sabo's death, please send that to us also. My email is tim at salem-news.com. Americans should be infuriated by the murder of Marine Corps officer, husband, father, brother, and son, Colonel James Sabo. A recent shooter at the Pentagon cited Jim Sabo as the reason that he went off the deep end. That along with other controversial items about the United States government. For now, Colonel Sabo's death remains ruled a suicide. However, that isn't expected to last for very long with the evidence that's growing. I'm Tim King, reporting for SalemNews.com.